It's my great pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Dr. Prima Arsu joined Kansas State University in October of 2013. She leads K-State's presence in Greater Kansas City as the CEO and Vice President of the Olathe Campus. Dr. Arasu started her career as a professor and biomedical research scientist in infectious diseases, and she has held various academic administrative positions in government affairs, undergraduate, and graduate education, and international affairs at North Carolina State University and Washington State University. Dr. Arasu holds a bachelor's degree in biology from the National University of Malaysia, a master's degree in food science from the University of Wyoming, and a PhD in microbiology and in immunology from Hahnemann University, which is now Drexel University. She also earned her doctorate of veterinary medicine degree from Cornell University and an MBA from the University, or the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. So apparently you've spent a lot of time in education, a lot of time and a lot of investment. Today, Dr. Arasu will talk about Kansas State's, K-State's Olathe's role in expanding educational opportunities and boosting economic growth in the greater Kansas City area. Please provide a warm welcome. Thank you, Dr. Strader, for inviting me um, to present today. And um, your question is a great segue into my presentation. Um, and I, just to remind everybody, the question was, what is K-State doing um, to help with horticulture and education? And I believe that I got invited to present because our campus of Kansas State University at Olathe is just about six miles down the road, if you head west, um, head west of here. And we certainly do have an emphasis in horticulture at this campus. And we're looking for ways in which we can partner with Johnson County Community College and others here in the region to further um, embrace and expand the opportunities here. I will tell you that I do not have green thumbs but I liked what I heard about green collar, and I'd like to suggest a, a, a tagline, which is, I grow. I think there's many ways in which people would embrace that, whether in the US or globally. So think about that. It, it just, I loved the suggestions that came up. Um, so Dr. Strader and I sort of talked about this title for the talk, which is basically giving you a sense of what K-State Olathe does down the road here. And then I'll end with what we have as our agricultural programs um, here. Um, let's see. Here we go. Um, this is our mission for the Olathe campus, and it's a mouthful, but I wanted to, um, I bulleted these points because we want to be at this campus adaptable, interdisciplinary, innovative. We want to integrate education, research, and public private engagement. So the simple tagline for us is that we want to connect people, we want to drive innovation, and we do want to think about sustainable growth for this region. I want to share with you a little bit about the history for this campus because it's relevant to all of us here in the Johnson County and to also give you a sense of Kansas State University's footprint in this um, Johnson County region. We started in 2005, it was way before I came to this region, um, talking about a presence for Kansas State University here. And then in 2007, this campus was actually incorporated as a nonprofit. So we are still a 501c3, and it was called the Kansas State Olathe Innovation Campus. And then how many of you are not Johnson County residents? All right, just a couple of people. The rest of you, thank you. Because as voters of this community, in 2008, depths of the recession, to agree to an increase in the sales tax is very impressive. It's very impressive because it's still one of a kind across the nation that we have this kind of community support for higher education and what it can do for regional growth and economic development. Because of that sales tax increase, in 2009, the Johnson County Education Research Triangle Authority was formed it's the board that juris, um, has authority over the sales tax collection. I will share with you that it generates about $15 million a year, and that's spread three ways. It's the KU Edwards campus, specifically for their BEST program, which is Business Science, Engineering, and Technology. It's for the Clinical Research Trial Center, again with the KU Medical Center, and they focus on cancer and Alzheimer's disease in particular and it's also for the Olathe Innovation Campus. That's the money that helped launch the building. And how many of you have seen that building? So not everybody. So I invite the rest of you to please come and visit. 
It's a lovely 110,000 square foot building. Um, we are in the Kansas Biosciences Park, meaning that we're right next to the Kansas Biosciences Authority. And um, we sit on about 38 acres. Eight acres is what the current building sits on. So we've got opportunity for building two, three, four, five, hopefully in, in coming years. And um, this first building opened in April of 2011. So as I share with you the rest of our story, bear in mind that it's still a very young campus and we're still building our programs. And in 2014, I came here in October of 2013, I serve as the second CEO of the campus. In 2014, the Board of Regents of Kansas approved that this would be a new kind of business-centric campus with the kinds of programmings that I'll be sharing with you um, as I share a bit more. So we're very much attentive to the stakeholders in this region as we think about what this campus does. Under that JSER text that I told you about, our mandate is to focus on research and graduate education as it relates to food, animal health, and related sectors. We also have an obligation to the city of Olathe that gave us those 38 acres. So their expectation from us is that we will also help with workforce, that we will help with economic development, that we will help translate into new businesses coming um, to the city of Olathe. And certainly the regional businesses, and I just share some of the big names that you might be familiar with, because as you might appreciate, we've got a fair number of food-related companies in this area, and some of them are indicated here. But if you ask me why did I put U.S. Bank and why did I put Black & Veatch, well, because U.S. Bank gives us the loans that help the businesses to run. Black & Veatch is engaged in engineering and water and other kinds of sectors that absolutely also help with all the other food and animal health-related things that we need to do. So all of these... And I liked that concluding slide that, um, um, I'm sorry, I, I missed your name. Dennis. Yeah, Dennis, thank you so much for that slide. Because we are all interconnected and all these sectors help feed each other. And we do need to think this way as we go forward. So what are the current programs at the Olathe campus? We have food science. We have horticulture. We have biomedical sciences with a veterinary focus. We have biological and agricultural engineering. We also partner with the Department of Agribusiness, and we offer the animal health component here at the Olathe campus, and we also have degrees in adult education. In addition to that, we have a kitchen research incubator, which occupies about 6,000 square feet of that 110,000 square foot building. We've got a consumer research center, and you might ask what that is. So it's actually part of the Sensory and Consumer Research Studies group out of Kansas State University. The sensory is when you have a trained palate. The consumer is when it could be you or me serving on these panels, giving our opinions. And so that's what's really taken off um, with the consumer center that we have here at Olathe. Dr. Marianne Sweeney Stuvi runs that, and she's got more studies than she can manage, and so we're actually in the midst of increasing staffing size for that one. The next one on this list is the Merck Microbial Surveillance Lab, and that's a partnership with the College of Veterinary Medicine. It's the Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory, and they got a piece of equipment where they can do um, profiling of bacteria, and also looking at antibiotic susceptibility in that lab. We've got a multi-college partnership, which is what the Urban Water Institute is about. We've also got a grant from the U.S. Economic Development Administration, and that's the EDA here, for a project that we've labeled the Innovation Accelerator. That one connects the College of Engineering's Advanced Manufacturing Institute with the Institute for Commercialization with K-State Olathe. So we're looking at ways in which we can bring the thinking of business and engineering to food and animal health types of problems and solution finding. And we also do a lot of K through 12 outreach. I won't have it on the slide, but I just wanna share with you for those um, who might have even participated in programs that, that are now associated here with the college, we've interacted with over 10,000 K through 12 students and teachers since we opened in 2011. So there's been a lot of outreach with a lot of help. Well, thank you. Um, and it's. It's not K-State or Latha. This is all of Kansas State University. So we've had more than 150 faculty from K-State who've contributed to this partnership and reaching out to the students to encourage them to think about education and higher education. And a photo of our first graduates. So we opened in 2011, and these are our graduates from last summer. 
um, from both adult education as well as food science. So things that we're proud of from last year, I'll just share some highlights with you. Remember I told you 2009 was when the JSERD board was formed? Well, last year we celebrated year five. And remember I kept saying economic development? Well, they checked each of the three initiatives and they're pretty pleased with the progress. So for K-State Olathe, since we opened in 2011, we've had an economic footprint of about 23 million. And this assessment was done by an independent um, agency, the um, County Economic Research Institute that's based out in Overland Park did this analysis. And they also informed us that our impact has resulted in 68 in terms of employment and about 6.6 .6 million in household earnings. The research programs that we have at the campus, so when I mentioned that 110,000 square foot building, it's got 10 research laboratories in addition to about six sort of modular classrooms. We've got three or four um, sort of 10, 15 person conference rooms as well as others where you can do informal meetings. And we've also got a forum hall that looks a little bit like this that can seat about 150 to 170 people. So in the research space, we've got programs going on with horticulture and urban food systems. The person running that is Dr. Eleni Pleaconi, and I'll show you a picture of her shortly, and she's also a participant in this um, events today, so you'll get a chance to meet with her if you haven't already. We've got a food microbiologist who works on food safety, E. coli and salmonella and those kinds of bacteria. We've also got Dr. Londa Nwadike, who works with the Missouri as well as the Kansas Extension, and she's a food safety specialist. We've got bioengineering, which is Dr. May Her, and she works on microfluidics, and actually her um, capability is in, if you can think about little strips that are just about this big. Her work was initially on breast cancer detection, but she can do the same kind of technology with nanotechnology on food contaminants or contaminants in water. So it's pretty exciting to have somebody with her expertise on our team as well. I already mentioned the consumer studies. We've got a water group um, and we've got a professor from geology who's involved with most of that lab work. And then I mentioned the innovation accelerator as well. We are running at about 1,000 people in different programs at the Olathe campus a month at this point. It includes about 70 graduate students in all these different graduate programs that I told you about. And we've probably got about 500 over the course of the year that are non-degree seeking students who are taking different kinds of professional development courses or things that may not be for credit. So they're not working towards a, um, a degree, but they're taking courses through the Olathe campus. In total, we currently offer over 30 courses, eight graduate degrees, two certificates and workshops. I put one example there about big data in business. We're gonna be rolling out a few more this year as we start growing and building our um, faculty and staff team. And the excitement for me um, and what I worked on in 2014 that has come forward now in January of 2015 is we have a new school that is a school for applied and interdisciplinary studies. It's a big deal to me because again, as Dennis was saying earlier, we need to connect food and water and health and engineering and business into these kinds of considerations as we educate and think about how each of our pet um, um, projects, for you it's horticulture, but I'm sure you have other interests, but how do we bring all these together and the school will allow us to connect some of those dots. We also this year have a design thinker in residence. And she's bringing design thinking into more innovative, both educational as well as um, corporate sector partnerships. And we're excited about the opportunities that these new ways of innovation thinking can bring to bear. And one example of what we did um, in December was a workshop where we had about 65 people. It included about 25 high school students. The other 40 were um, people from the private sector, from civic organizations, and from the university. We used the design thinking approach, and basically, quote unquote, we brainstormed and ideated about how we can scale up workforce experiences for K through 20. Why would we do that? Nationally, less than 5% of students get a chance to do internships, and I think we'll all agree that we need workplace experiences as we think about the future. So this was a very exciting workshop, and we've actually, one of the ideas from that is resulting in an actual project that we're doing with industry experts. So we actually have Garmin, 
Hallmark Cards and Burns and McDonald, which is an um, architectural construction company. Advisors from these three companies are now working with us with Olathe East High School. And we have about 7,000 square feet of unfinished space at the campus. And what they're doing is researching creative spaces. And they're going to now give us some design ideas on how we can mod um, modify the space into something that we can do with companies in terms of digital or virtual types of internship opportunities and problem solving space. Um, so we're very excited about that. So moving into what you, is dear to your hearts, which is horticulture, I'll tell you a little bit about the masters in horticulture that we have through K-State or Latham. The specialization is in urban food systems and the lead on it is again, I mentioned her name, Dr. Eleni Pliaconi. Her expertise is in urban food production and post-harvest handling. She's actually very quickly and very successfully for a new faculty member. She joined us in January of 2013. Within the year, she landed a US Department of Agriculture grant for just about a million dollars. And she's working on things like spinach and tomatoes from the point that it's harvested till it gets on the grocery shelf. What are all the considerations that you need to be thinking about? What she's developing in, in partnership with her colleagues in the Department of Horticulture based at Manhattan, as well as with um, the Research and Extension Group that is here in the greater Kansas City area, is to respond to industry needs. And these are some of the stakeholders with the program that they've put together. Also, um, I want to highlight that Dr. Kerry Rivard is here today. If you haven't already met him, please uh, meet him downstairs. Their facility sits on over 300 acres, and I think everybody here is aware of Santa Fe um, Road. If you keep heading west on it, it dead ends at their, um, at their area. So three faculty there with three full-time staff. They've got graduate students, they've got seasonal staff. I got to visit it once last summer, and I was very impressed with what they're doing out there. So um, Kerry shared with me that they've got current research projects on tomato, pumpkins, um, strawberries. That's another thing. Come visit us in the summer because whatever they don't use for research, we get to eat. So lovely tomatoes and strawberries that come from there that we really enjoy. And um, they do a lot of extension outreach as well with um, different organizations highlighted here. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, and I'd be happy to entertain questions, but remember that I'm not the horticulture expert, but I'd be happy to um, entertain general questions. Thanks for your attention. Yes. Again, it's a sincere thanks to uh, K-State for its commitment to our horticulture in the area, but to also for your facility. <laughs> Was, were you a jack of all trades or a master of none? Mm -hmm. And that's a tough balancing act for you, how to find the <coughs> blend and get a something you really enjoy doing that matters. And uh, for the young people in here, that can take a while, but they do. Yeah. Thank you. And I appreciate your comment because I, I think I should also add that some of the conversations that we've been having is to look at things like a two plus two plus two or a two plus two plus one, right, as we go forward. So we've been talking about even mapping out what's, what's it get you and coming back to the green collar and making a white collar salary um, as you go forward. We want to be able to document what the opportunities are in this area so that you can look at what's the salary range, what's the opportunities, what kinds of things could we do that go beyond education and also tr um, translating it into career opportunities. Any other questions or comments? Great, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.